from Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Missouri, WWOR-TV presents New York Mets baseball. As tonight, the Mets take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Mets baseball 87 is brought to you this evening by Budweiser. Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Nissan, who invites you to test drive a hot new Nissan car or truck and see why Nissan makes you feel like driving. By Manufacturers Hanover, the financial source worldwide. By the 9X Yellow Pages. It's the one you've always had. It's the only one you need. By your good old skies, the New York, New Jersey, and Southern Connecticut Oldsmobile dealers. By the American Express car. Don't leave home without it. And by the New York Daily News, New York's hometown paper. Pitching for the Mets tonight, the doctor, right-hander Dwight Gooden, who's 7-3 with an ERA of 2.62. And on the mound for the Cardinals, left-hander Greg Matthews, 7-7 seven seven with an ERA of 3.86. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Rob Kiner, along with Tim McCarver and Steve Sabrisky. And everything has gone according to plan A. Tim, the Mets came in hoping to sweep the series. They've won the first two games, very exciting ball games. And the one thing they have changed in plan A was moving Dwight Gooden into this series. He was scheduled to go against Montreal. Dwight Gooden's last start was Sunday against the Houston Astros, and he had a 2-1 lead when he left, and Jesse Orozco gave up the three-run homer, if you remember, to uh, Billy Hatcher of the Houston Astros, and it's Gooden on the mound tonight. I, I really don't understand, Ralph, why there's such a to-do about a pitcher coming back with three days rest. I mean, only five or six years ago, baseball was uh, delegated by uh, four-man rotations, but not so today. It's usually a five-man rotation. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that pitchers don't have to win 20 games anymore mm -hmm. to get big salaries. If you had to win 20 to get big salaries, they would demand to be pitching every fourth day. There's, it's really something. The Cardinals, on the other hand, with Greg Matthews on the mound, they have a five-man rotation. John Tudor was reactivated today. That's a key point as far as the Cardinals are concerned, and he will be the starting pitcher against Pittsburgh on Saturday. And the Mets have an extra plus going for them. Sometimes it doesn't quite work that way. Jack Clark is not in the starting line. Right. They're big man he is out with an injury not anything that will keep him out for any length of time but that could be a help for the New York Mets so the Mets going against the St. Louis Cardinals they are six and a half games out of first if they can win here tonight it would be five and a half games we'll be back for the start of the ball game right after this message from Budweiser down for St. Louis he has a record of seven and seven an earned run average at 3.86 working a total of 120 Six and one third innings, giving up 108 hits, 10 of them home runs. He has walked 50 and struck out 58. Lifetime against the Mets, he has won two and lost three. And let's take a look at the lineup for New York. Mookie Wilson, the center fielder, leading off. Tim Tuffle at second, batting second. And Keith Hernandez at first base, hitting in that familiar three spot. Darrell Strawberry, the right fielder, batting fourth. Kevin McReynolds in left, batting fifth. And Gary Carter once again behind the plate. And he'll hit sixth. Howard Johnson, the shortstop, the hero in last night's game, batting seventh. Dave Magadan tonight at third base with Johnson at shortstop, Magan in the third, Magan in batting eighth, and Dwight Gooden on the mound batting ninth. The defense for the Cardinals, Lindemann at first base, Her playing second, Smith at short, Pendleton at third. Coleman, McGee, and Ford in the outfield left to right, and the catcher is Pena. The Mets six and a half games back of the Cardinals in third place. Montreal winning today over the Cubs, and they're now four and a half games. The Mets getting the six and a half games back, with a dramatic home run in the 10th inning against the Cardinals last night. It was off Pat Perry on a 1-2 pitch, and Ralph, you, it was explained well by Steve Zabriskie saying that three in a row in that third time, if you throw that screwball three times in a row, and the third one's got to be better, and Hernandez telling Davey Johnson that right there. So Pat Perry, the losing pitcher in the ballgame last night, Whitey, Herzog, of course, not taking it very lightly. As the Cardinals now have lost six in a row, their longest losing streak of the year. Pat Perry right there after the loss last night. So Mookie Wilson into the batter's box. Mookie hitting 289. He has six home runs, 23 RBIs. In this series, he's had a hit in each game. He is two for 10. And the breaking ball by Matthews in there called strike. Mookie hitting 314 against the Cardinals this year with 11 base hits. He has not had an RBI. 
Fastball back and lined down the left field line. Into the corner. Mookie will get two. The ball played out there by Coleman, and the Mets have the first base runner of the ball game. Mookie's been in a bit of a spin, and he's been hitting a lot of fastballs. As you see that wet outfield right there, a torrential downpour for about an hour and a half before the game tonight. It's fine right now. But Mookie's been fouling a lot of balls back off to the right. And I'm sure Davey Johnson is happy to see him pulling that BB down the left field line. Mookie's 13th double. It brings up Tim Tuffle. Tuffle hitting 346, eight home runs, 34 runs batted in. Tuffle, the hottest batter for the Mets, and the breaking ball hangs high for ball one. Tuffle in this series two for seven. In his last 14 games, he's batting 400 with 13 runs scored, seven two base hits, and four home runs. He also has driven in 12. And the left hander back with a change up, and he has what he calls a circle change. Circle change, actually, as you look at Gooden and Carter, Gooden does not feature the circle change, doesn't need it really. <laughs> But the circle change is the index finger and the thumb come together to form a quarter. That was a curveball right there. And what he does, he kind of pushes the ball with the last three fingers. The circle change made famous by Charlie Liebran of the Kansas City Royals in the 1985 season. But it's a very, very effective pitch for Greg Matthews. So the count at two and one as the left hander with a record of 18 and 15 as his major league record picks up a strike with the circle change. Matthew is two and three against the Mets in his major league career. Last year he was 11 and eight. Second as a rookie pitcher to Deshays who had 12 victories. Jim Deshays of the Houston Astros. Wilson the runner at second no one out. We're just underway on a warm evening, but cooled somewhat by a tremendous thunderstorm that did here about five o'clock. <laughs> did it ever. And the fastball and Tuffle goes down swinging. Well, this happens sometimes after all of those change-ups. That fastball looks like it's thrown about 100 miles an hour. And Tuffle swings at the bad ball out of the strike zone, so he fails to advance Wilson. And the big crowd here greeting Keith Hernandez with his usual booze. Keith, of course, played here for many years with the St. Louis Cardinals. Keith brings a 296 batting average to the game with 10 home runs, 45 RBIs. Keith, so far in this series, three for eight and hitting 311 against the Cardinals with 10 runs batted in. He's had one home run. And the curveball, a called strike. Joe West, the home plate umpire, and he's had a very difficult series. Umpiring at second base in the first game, he ejected Whitey Herzog for a disputed play with Keith Hernandez running into the second baseman, Tommy Herr. And at first base last night, he had several very, very close plays and many disputed. Disputed, but he got him uh, as the as the camera showed and our replay show for the most part. And he's gotten most of the calls right. He had one of those days that come about once a year at first base. He Thankfully. must have had about six or seven <laughs> of those bang bang plays at first. Yeah, he did. One ball, one strike to Keith Hernandez. Keith, a former batting champion for the St. Louis Cardinals and also a former MVP for the Cardinals. So Greg Matthews ready to work. And this pitch is hit foul back out of play. The Cardinals and Mets have played 11 times this year. The Cardinals have won six. And here at Bush Memorial Stadium, the Cardinals have won three of the five plays. Davy Johnson and Mel Stoudemire. Stoudemire on the right of your screen, and there's Whitey Herzog. Whitey winning his 1,000th win against the Mets earlier this year. And Keith just manages to stay alive as he checks and fouls. 
I think if a left-handed hitter wasn't up there, Wilson would be more inclined to try to steal third base. But with Pena's arm and flexibility with Pendleton at third base, it's doubtful Mookie will try to steal with the left-hander. There's no impediment of the right-handed hitter up there for the catcher to go through. And this ball hit on the ground toward the first baseman Lindemann, and he'll take it by himself. So the Cardinals pick up the out as Mookie goes over to third. That'll bring up Daryl Strawberry. Daryl hitting 271, 23 home runs, 57 RBIs, got his 23rd home run yesterday. It was his 10th home run off a left handed pitcher. It came off of Horton, the starting pitcher for the Cardinals yesterday. And the high pitch for ball one. Mets have the best record in the National League against Eastern Division clubs with a record of 28 and 18. Cardinals have a record of 26 and 19 against Eastern Division clubs. And the curveball for a ball 2 and 0. And it behooves you to beat the teams in your division because those wins mean much more than the ones against the other division. 2 and 0. And the circle change again. And it's two and one. Throw that over with a count two and zero, oh, and you're going to be a winner in the big leagues. Now the two one pitch, the fastball, and ball three, three balls, one strike. That's really good policy, and catchers are taught that. Now you don't want to fall into a pattern, but if a pitcher can get a off-speed pitch over behind in the count, it's usually good policy to come back with the fastball. And that pitch a ball and Strawberry comes up with a walk. So the Mets with runners at first and third. For Strawberry that is his 64th walk of the year. The leader is Clark who is not playing today. Jack Clark with 103 walks. Got a chance to come up with a record. Record held by Babe Ruth with 170 walks in the season. That'll bring up Kevin McReynolds. McReynolds hitting 286. 19 home runs, 61 runs batted in. And the curveball, a strike call. Mark Reynolds batting 341 against Cardinal pitching this year. No home runs, but five RBIs. And the changeup, strike two. Send Strawberry here? I would. Count 0 and 2 to McReynolds. You're probably going to get an off speed pitch. You got Wilson at third base. If he's not looked back, you got a chance to steal a. Steal a run. Cheap run. If the count's 2 and 0, on the other hand, you let McReynolds hit, but it's 0 2 on Kevin. Strawberry, a short lead, and he does not go. And the changeup hit down the right field line. If it's fair, it's extra bases, a fair ball. Coming in to score is Wilson. Strawberry going to third. He's being pulled in. The throw to the plate is not in time. And McReynolds drives in two with an extra base hit in the Mets lead two to nothing. McReynolds hitting that changeup down the right field line. So it'll be a three base hit for Kevin McReynolds. That is his first of the year and the Mets lead by two. Well just an absolutely superb job of hitting. We talk about guarding the outside part of the plate with two strikes. And boy, I'll tell you, that is about as good as you can do it. Plunk down the right field line and two RBIs for McReynolds. RBIs number 62 and three. And a big two out triple for Kevin puts the Mets on top. And it brings up Gary Carter. Carter hitting 243, 13 home runs, 50 runs batted in. Carter with a good series going. He's five for ten, but he pops this one up in the shallow center. Might drop in. Her is back. He can't get to it. And it drops in for a base hit. McReynolds scores from third, and the Mets lead by a score of three to nothing. Now there's really no defense against a hit like this. You have to respect Carter's power, and because of that, big, strong hitters have an inclination to get hits like this, whereas little guys that you have to play shallow 
I'll never get a hit like that. So there's really an advantage to being a power hitter. You get a lot of dunkers that way, not only the long ball, but the dunkers too. And now the batter will be Howard Johnson, who has been the Mets power hitter here of late. Johnson with a game-winning RBI and home run in last night's ball game. Now with 24 home runs, 60 runs batted in. Club leader in both those departments in the first pitch ball one. Johnson hitting 275, and in last night's ball game, he got his first four-hit game. He had had 14 three-hit games, and last night his first where he was four hits for five at bats. And that one in the dirt, and it's 2-0. So Greg Matthews, who pitched a shutout for the first time this year, finding himself behind 3-0 here in the top of the first. Matthews' shutout came on June 25th against the Phillies, a three-hitter, and he won it 3-0. And the fastball for a ball, three balls, no strike. And, Ralph, I guess it's worth mentioning that the Montreal Expos beat the Cubs today 6-1. to one. So, technically, the Expos only four and a half back. And where do the Mets go from here? Montreal for three big games. Now the pitch back, a fastball. And it's called a strike by Joe West. Three and one the count. We'll be on the air Saturday night and Sunday afternoon right here on WWOR for the games. Be Floyd Yeomans on Saturday night against Terry Leach and Ron Darling against Bob Sabra on Sunday afternoon. 3 1 pitch to Johnson and it's popped up. The shortstop, Ozzie Smith, calling. And he makes the catch and that retires the side. But the Mets get three runs on three hits. There were no errors and one man left on base and the score at the end of one half inning. The Mets three, the St. Louis Cardinals coming up. Now here's a word from the ground for the Mets with a record of seven and three and earned run average of 2.62. He's worked 82 and a third innings, given up 69 hits, five of them home runs, walking 26, striking out 61. Dwight six and two lifetime against the Cardinals. Vince Coleman leading it off and Ozzie Smith batting second. Tommy Hur, the second baseman, hitting third. Willie McGee batting fourth tonight with Jack Clark out of there. Terry Pendleton, the third baseman, hitting fifth. Kurt Ford in right batting sixth. And Jim Lindemann, the first baseman, hitting seventh. Tony Pena behind the plate batting eighth. And, of course, Greg Matthews batting ninth. And defensively, Hernandez. And here's that base hit by McReynolds out to right on the change of pace. I think you called it right defensively. That's how he hit it with a count 0-2 and, and two outs. A defensive swing, and an, I'm telling you, that was just a fine, fine piece of hitting by McReynolds. And the first pitch by Dwight Gooden is a fastball for ball one. Vince Coleman, the batter, hitting 285 with no home runs, 26 runs batted in. And in this series, Coleman is two for eight. And, of course, one of the great base runners in the game of baseball. And it's ball two, two balls, no strikes. This is Matthews coming in after the Mets scored three. It's got to be asking how McReynolds ever hit that change of pace for a triple down the right field line. Now he's talking to Pena as Gooden comes back and gets a strike. Coleman hitting 275 against the Mets with 11 base hits. First strike called by Joe West against the Cardinals. Vince Coleman turned around and looked at him. Whitey Herzog was run from the game a couple of nights ago by West. Second time that Whitey's been run out of a ball game this year. Chopped to short. Johnson waits, throws hard to first, and gets Coleman. Betting second number one. So one away. Incidentally, Wadi Herzog has been ejected twice this year and both times in games with the Mets. Once by Doug Harvey and once by Joe West. Now the batter will be Ozzie Smith. Ozzie hitting 290 for the year with no home runs, 55 runs batted in. The 55 RBIs, a career high for him for a season. Batting 205 against the Mets. And he gets a curveball for ball one. Ozzie has hit Dwight Gooden very well. He's had 12 hits and 36 at bats. That equates out to 333 for lifetime. Fastball foul away. One ball, one strike. 
Smith a very tough man to strike out. He has struck out only one time for 26 at bats. 21 strikeouts and 434 plate appearances. One and one the count. And the fastball hit down the line. And again, he comes up with a base hit off good. It'll go for two as it goes under the stands. And that'll be a grounds rule double. See, the ball that's down and in, it's easier to inside out. Look at that. Little chip shot right inside the line, and it did roll under the stands. Watch the ball down and in. Now watch what he does. He just drags the bat head through the strike zone and plunks it down the left field line. Kind of big on plunk tonight. That's the <laughs> second time I've used plunk. Very interesting word. Now the batter will be Tommy Hur. Incidentally, you can't count yourself up against the Cardinals. Mets leading 3 nothing. The Cardinals lead the league in hitting at 277. They lead in runs scored, averaging 5.5 runs a game. The Mets are third in runs scored, averaging 4.9. And they are third in the league in hitting at 270. So the Cardinals, a team that has not been shut out this year. Last time they were shut out, August 29th, 1986. And the fastball to Tommy Herr for ball one. Her hitting 269, one home run, 47 runs batted in. Four for four in last night's ball game, and that got him out of a horrendous slump. He had, had only 10 hits in his last 94 bats before last night's ball game. Chopped out the third and by Magadan, by Johnson. And Smith had to hold in the play, crosses over to third. As Tommy Herr gets his fifth hit in the row against the Mets. Magadan couldn't have seen the ball. He didn't see the ball. Watch. See that late break? He never saw the ball. That ball's one step to his left. He couldn't have seen the ball. Watch. It's almost as though he broke either to his right or in before he broke properly to his left, and then it was too late. So runners at first and third with one man out, and the batter will be Willie McGee. McGee hitting in the cleanup spot. Jack Clark unable to play in this game today because of contusions on his right elbow and right shoulder. McGee hitting 297 with eight home runs and 75 RBIs. So far in this series, he's 0 for 9, and in last night's ball game, he had eight men on base and never drove in one. Now, again, he has runners on base, first and third, and he takes a curveball for strike one. Opportunities knocking one more time. Huh? Boy, he's had some chances. Strangely enough, he's had two or more runs batted in in 22 games this year. And he's having a great RBI year with 75 so far. One strike to count. Again, the curve. It's chopped out to Hernandez. And now they have Smith hung up and a run down between home and third. The throw now to Hernandez. A tag is made. And holding at second base is Tommy Hur. So the Mets on a base running mistake by Ozzie Smith get a break there as Keith Hernandez for the second time in this series stops a runner from scoring from third and on a play to the plate. Ralph, you are exactly right. And the reason being, if you're on third and the ball's hit sharply, then you break to break up two. And if they don't complete the double hit, the double play, you score. On the slowly hit ball, however, you've got to be very careful as the runner at third base. Technically, the Cardinals should have runners at second and third now with two outs. And what do they have? Runners at first and second with two outs. And a good play by Hernandez. In yesterday's ball game, the Cardinals in the first inning had their first batter hit by a pitch ball. Her walk, a strikeout, then another walk. Bases loaded. They had three stolen bases in the inning and did not score. So the Cardinals really having some difficulties as the first pitch to Terry Pendleton is called a ball. Willie McGee stranding two more runners. That's 10 in a row. Wow. Pendleton hitting an even 310 with eight home runs and 60 runs batted in. In this series, he's three for nine.
That's a very technical play. A runner on third and less than two outs. You go on a sharply hit ball, but a little tapper to first and third. That might be their only play. And the pitch back to Pendleton, a fastball that's fouled out. And it's two and one. You're watching Mets Baseball 87 on WWOR TV, Secaucus, New Jersey. Pendleton earlier this year had a 19 game hitting streak, a career high and the highest in the National League this year. And the curveball ripped foul down the right field line. So the hanging curveball pulled foul and Pendleton back for another piece of wood. Something I've really never thought about, but it's it's uh, it's really fun to hear a crowd immediately cheer on an airborne ball. A, a ground ball may be hit sharply, but the fans have to wait before the ball gets through to see if it found a hole, and then they cheer. On any ball airborne, there's an immediate chant from the home crowd. It's kind of interesting. And also the bench of the side that's hitting all come out to yeah, look. Yeah, that's right. They stand <laughs> up. It, it's <laughs> fascinating the way this game affects you. Two and two, the count to Terry Pendleton. Pendleton setting a career high for walks with 43 coming into this game. The 2-2 pitch. Fastball, and he fouls it back. Mets leading three nothing the Cardinals with runners at first and second two men away we're in the bottom half of the first once again good and reading the signs and set to go. And the fastball again fouled away. A message on the message board that's rather interesting, Tim. Mike Dunn of the Pittsburgh Pirates has a no-hitter through six innings facing the Philadelphia Phillies. And Mike Dunn, if you remember, in that trade from the Cardinals to the Pirates, along with Andy Van Slyke and Mike Lavalier for Tony Pena. So Pena. Mike Dunn working on a no-hitter. And the Phillies have beat the Pirates. 10 out of their last 11 games. There's a base hit to right field. Coming around third as Tommy heard the throw going to third. And Payne Pendleton with a base hit to put the Pirate put the Cardinals on the scoreboard. Well, we talked about the at bat by Kevin McReynolds and a good at bat by Terry Pendleton. Boy, he is having a whale of a year. His 61st RBI. But the Cardinals could have had two runs across instead of one were it not for the base running mistake of Ozzie Smith. So runners at first and third on Pendleton's base hit, hitting a hanging curveball. And now the batter will be Kurt Ford. Ford hitting 307 with three home runs and 24 RBIs. Throw to first base, Pendleton back. Saying hangers should store airplanes, right? Absolutely, or dirigibles. Or jackets. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't need any jackets tonight. <laughs> back to the curve, and that one a good one. It's strike one. There is such a difference between the good hard curveball, which is almost impossible to hit, and especially hit in the air to the hanging curveball, which is very easy to hit in the air. One strike to count. And again, a throw to first. You often hear even baseball people talk about the hanger as being a high pitch. That's not necessarily so. A hanger can be low also. If the action on that particular pitch is stopped in the hitting zone, it's a hanger, high or low. And another breaking ball, and that one just outside. One ball, one strike. The Cardinals have come back to win 35 of their 61 games. Their 61 wins, the most in the major leagues, in spite of losing the last six. And again, the curveball, this one in the strike zone, and that was a sharply 
breaking curveball there. I kind of like that sequence too. After hanging the curveball to Pendleton, Gary Carter has come back and I think properly called it because you just can't disregard it. You've got to have Gooden's curveball. Three in a row to Ford. Now the one-two pitch. And he goes high and Ford almost falls down trying to hold up. Two balls, two strikes. Good pitching selection. Trying to get Ford to chase this one. Three curve balls and he almost went after it. The eye high fastball, but he did not go around. Two and two the count. Pendleton, a good size lead at first. He is running and the pitch is fouled out of play. So Pendleton back to first base. Cardinals with 148 stolen bases lead the National League. They're well on their way to the sixth consecutive year with 200 or more stolen bases. Whitey Herzog likes that type of play. Six consecutive years of 200 stolen bases. The record is eight held by the Chicago Cubs in the early 1900s. Two and two. And this time some attention at first. The all time record held by the Oakland A's when Chuck Tanner had them in 1976. I think it was 341. That's the American League record and. He had everyone going. Yeah. In those days. Again Pendleton running the ball hit out to third and a base hit by Magadan. Pendleton going to third as McGee scores. And the Cardinals are back in the ball game as Kurt Ford singles the opposite way to drive in the second run of the game. Now this is a typical Cardinal attack. Two up, make that three opposite field hits. Again, Magadan did not get a good jump on that ball. Now that ball is very quick. Watch Magadan. See, he's not getting a jump on the ball. There's no movement to his left right away. Both of those balls really could have been handled. Now the ball is getting through there in a hurry, but Dave's not picking the ball up for some reason. So now the time run is at third base, and the batter is Jim Lindemann. Lindemann playing first base with Jack Clark out, and a throw to first. Lindemann hitting 190, has three home runs, 15 runs batted in. Twice this year has been on the DL with back spasms. Now throw to first. And Ford is back. Mets jumping off to a 3 0 lead. The Cardinals coming back to pick up two. And they have the time run at third. They go ahead, run at first, but two men out here in the first inning. And a good curveball. Human night in St. Louis. They predicted the temperature to be 91 at game time. It might be a shade cooler because of the rain. It was 97 here today. And a bouncing ball up the middle. Johnson over and he shovels off to Tuffle and they pick up the force play at second and the inning. But two runs for the Cardinals on four hits. They leave two. And the score at the end of one, the Mets three and the St. Louis Cardinals two. Now here's a word from Ninus. Well, the Mets leading by a score of three to two. Two balls ju just hit by Magadan at third base. He did not appear to be able to see the ball, getting a very late jump. And Bud Harrelson, a great shortstop for the New York Mets, talking to him about possibly that. Mets leading three to two. And for New York, the leadoff batter will be Dave Magadan. Tell you, it should be pointed out too, Ralph, as you can see the cutout around home plate and first base in your screen right now that the infield is wet. It's not as wet as the outfield, but it rained so hard here that water did get up under that tarp. I mean, the wind was blowing it's like a tornado. We went out to eat today, had our bags packed. Had we a couldn't tough time even get getting to out of there. <laughs> we couldn't even get to the cab. You That's and I right. couldn't walk 10 feet to the cab. <laughs> Took us 20 minutes to walk 10 feet. It was really coming down. First pitch to Magadan, and it's strike one. 
Magadan hitting 312, two home runs, 14 runs batted in. There's two home runs coming off a left handed pitcher. And the breaking ball for a ball, one ball, one strike. Magadan 0 for 2 against the Cardinals this year. And this ball two, two balls and one strike. Magadan with a five for five day against Houston back on last Friday. First five for five major league game. Tony Pena in that Toulouse Latrec catching stance back of home plate. This ball four, so the Mets get a runner on with no one out here in the second, leading three to two. And it brings up Dwight Gooden in a bunting situation. That's your impression, huh? <laughs> well, they got Vince Van Gogh in the outfield. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, I heard Whitey Herzog asking Tony, I think he was talking about his belt before the game. He said, too tight, too loose. <laughs> Had to be his belt. <laughs> Good and bunts it and bunts it off to the right side foul. Bill Webb continues to get on us about not walking that 10 feet in that rainstorm today. That's because he was dumb enough to go out in that storm and brave it. Well, I think that I think the key issue there was the hairstyle. You and I have spent a lot of time on our hairstyles today. Webb spends no time whatsoever on that hair of his. Never thought of that. You know, so it doesn't bother him. And the breaking ball taken in bunny position. One ball, one strike. <laughs> well, one thing about Webb, he did brush us off. <laughs> Gooden with five hits as a batter, five for 30. And he misses that bunt, so it's now one and two. Mets leading three to two as they bat in the second with a runner on first and no one out. Well, Von Hayes has spoiled the no hit bid by Pirate starter Mike Dunn with a single in the seventh inning. And Gooden bunts the two strike pitch. It's a good one. And the throw to first base in time for the out. Moving down to second is Magadan and the Mets with a runner in scoring position. Center fielder, Wilson. Really a good bunt. Tony Pena did have an idea about going to second watch. He wanted to. Now he almost waits too late, but he does get good in at first base. That'll bring up Mookie Wilson. Mookie let off the inning with a double the first inning. Later on scored. Mookie's third hit in the series and 11 at bats. hitting over 300 against the Cardinals this year with 12 hits and 36 at bats that would be 333 and he bounces this one out to third Pendleton looks the runner back and picks up the out so Magadan holds at second and the batter will be Tim Tuffle and it gives you an idea and not really coming down hard on Dave Magadan who normally is a first baseman he signed as a first baseman trying to make the adjustment but you could really see the difference on the way Terry Pendleton had that jump and got that jump on the ball as opposed to the two balls that were base hits the one by her and the one by Kurt Ford hit by Magadan to his left. I think one of the hardest things to judge if you're a scout is the range of a ball player. Yeah I would imagine that's a good point. And the good pitch, but just out of the strike zone. One ball, no strikes. Tuffle and struck out his first time up. Yeah, Ralph, anticipation is such a vital part of playing the infield, not necessarily the outfield, because the ball does not get to you as quickly. But anticipation, very important from an in infielder standpoint. And the fastball foul away. One of the things you can do as a defensive ball player is anticipate where the pitch is going. 
if the pitch is going away from the batter you anticipate the ball being hit to your left if you're an infielder on the third base or shortstop side and actually also on the other side too and in center field you really get a good chance by looking at the pitchers in center whether they're inside or out as to which way you're going to make that initial move. Yeah it's, it's much easier for the middle infielders second baseman and shortstop and the center fielder to get their jumps because they are seeing where the pitch is going just like you are from your living room. And this ball hit hard in the ground Pendleton quickly over to get in front of the ball and make the play and that'll do it. So a walk and a man left and the score at the end of one and a half innings of New York Mets three the St. Louis Cardinals two. Now here's a word from Nissan. Well we're back here at Bush Stadium and the Mets leading by a score of 3 2 as we go to the bottom of the second. Here is Ford's base hit by Magadan in third. And you see that he didn't really make a good move. It looked like he might not have saw, not have seen the ball. And it goes on by. Pendleton defensively at third on a ball that looked like it might be a base hit. On a ball hit by Tim Tuffle, quickly got over. Sometimes you do lose the ball with the white shirts in the stands. Yeah that's true. And as we go to the bottom of the second a man who followed many a baseball in this ballpark Tim McCarver. Yeah and I never had the problems with white shirts in the stands as a catcher. You're looking the other that's, way. That's exactly right. <laughs> That'll cut down on that. Right. There must be something wrong with a catcher when he's the only guy looking the other way. There's no question about there's something <laughs> being wrong with catchers. And I've never disputed that. <laughs> one and one to Pena. Tony Benning 240 26 RBIs and of course was out for six weeks earlier in the year with a broken left wrist. Change up and it's fouled away. Pena lifetime against Gooden is three for 27 with 10 strikeouts but he does not get cheated. It's a lot of fun this matchup these two guys. Tony not color coordinated with his sweatbands no. tonight, is he? Had to talk to him about that. I think he's got his road sweatbands on. Swing and a miss, and as we said, he had a healthy cut, one away. Gooden picks up his first strikeout, and he gets him with his good fastball. Actually, not a very good location. It's right down the slot. Pena gets his money's worth. It's like one of those dolls you see in the backs of cars, you know, where you flip the head a lot of times and the head goes. It's on that spring. When Tony swings through a good and fastball, that's what it reminds you of. Boy, his back takes a beating on the back last, doesn't he? Greg Matthews, uh huh. Sure does. Greg Matthews on the first pitch grounds to Hernandez. Two quick outs here in the. Second in the batter, Vince Coleman. Mets on top, three to two. Well, this little check swing, Vince slice Coleman. swing. Keith makes a good pickup on the very difficult half hop. Much easier to do on the artificial turf, although the turf right now is a little bit slick. The balls will skid off of it because of the rain. Coleman opened the first inning by grounding to shortstop. And then Ozzie Smith doubled. Tommy Hur singled. Smith going to third. The Mets thought they were out of it when Willie McGee grounded to Hernandez to get Smith. But then Terry Pendleton singled, and so did Kurt Ford. Mets took the three run lead in the top of the first on a two RBI double by Kevin McReynolds and a bloop single by Gary Carter. It's where we stand three to two, New York. One ball, no strikes to Coleman. 2 and 0. Oh. Well, Coleman, an idea about bunting. He's had a bunt base hit in this series, and he has had a total of 24 infield hits this year. And usually not a good play with two out, nobody on, but with Coleman, an excellent play because it might be a double. He can steal second, he can also steal third. He's stolen second and third in one inning seven times this year. And 32 for his career. It's two balls and a strike to Vince Coleman. Strike two, two and two. Lifetime against the Cardinals. Gooden is six and two. An ERA of under two. 
And he has five consecutive victories over St. Louis. Cardinals are hitting 207 as a team against Dwight Gooden lifetime with two home runs. Curveball gets him. Strikeout number two for Gooden, and I'll tell you that was Lord Charlie. It's three to two, New York. After two innings, we'll be back after this word from appropriately top of the third inning, and Keith Hernandez will lead it off with the Mets leading three to two here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. The Mets trying to get the broom out and sweep the Cardinals. That's what they did to the Mets the last time these two teams played here back in late April. Hernandez grounded sharply to first baseman Jim Lindemann his first at bat. Foul ball. No balls. One strike to Keith Hernandez. Another capacity crowd on hand. 52,000 the biggest crowd of the season on Tuesday night. And then 49,000 plus last night. We're right around 50 again this evening. A little looper over the head of Ozzie Smith for a base hit. So Hernandez has an opposite field a single, and he leads off the third. Right as Darryl the Mets Sonner. have had runners to lead off every inning here in the first three. Well, Keith gets his fourth hit of this series, slicing this ball over the shortstop's head. Watch the spin of the ball as the ball hits. Spinning right out there. Looked like a good cut shot what will often happen when that ball is hit the other way. It'll bounce to the left. Daryl Strawberry the batter. He walked and scored a run in the first and he takes a curveball for a strike. Tapper toward third could be trouble. Pendleton not in time at first infield hit for Strawberry. And the Mets have two on and none out here in the third. Well, this is a, excuse me, hit. Pendleton makes the throw to first base on the bounce. He makes a good fielding play. And it's bounced out there far enough that the first baseman, Lindemann, can make the play. Strawberry, an infield hit. Hernandez moving down to second. And the batter, Kevin McReynolds. An 0-2 triple to right field in his first at bat that drove in the first two Met runs. Curve ball outside. That was a strange pitch that backed up. Good play by Pena. He hit that three base hit off a change of pace out over the plate. And now Rourke, the pitching coach of the Cardinals, going to the mound, Mike Rourke. And this is a curveball that slid out of his hand. As Dizzy Dean would have said, here in St. Louis, it's slud out. Fleet tunnel. Warming up in the bullpen for St. Louis. So the count, one ball, no strikes to McReynolds. And Rourke out to talk to Matthews. Pena staying there to talk to Greg. Hernandez at second base, Strawberry at first, nobody out, and three to two New York. Montreal won their game today in Chicago. They beat the Cubs six to one, so the Expos continuing to play good ball. Marty Herzog looks on. Fastball for a strike. change up it's outside and high two balls and a strike Matthews unusually wild this evening he's had pretty good control against the Mets but he has walked 50 and struck out 58 coming into tonight's game that's a bad ratio almost one to one Well, he had a pitch to hammer then and fouls it back. Two balls, two strikes. Came right back into the middle of the plate with a fastball, and McReynolds didn't get it. Look at the location on this one, right down the slot. The 
Reynolds has driven in 19 runs in his last 18 games. Not counting this one where he has two more. Two two pitch. Well hit left field way back is Coleman. This ball is caught by Coleman. I can't believe this ball at this park held that ball. McReynolds looked in disbelief at Bill Robinson, the first base coach, but a long out by McReynolds. Wow. Well, it appeared he got it on a good part of the bat, and it looks as though he did right there, but the ball did not carry at all. This is a very tough park. It goes to the back of the warning track, and McReynolds, McReynolds is denied. It would have been a three-run home run, a big one, but it is a long out. Oh, Whitey Herzog's making a move. He has seen enough of Greg Matthews. That ball hit by McReynolds, even though it wasn't out, Whitey had seen enough. No manager in baseball would take him out after an out. Guaranteed. Well, Whitey makes quick decisions, and generally they are right. He's an outstanding manager, and he is going to the right-hand pitcher, Lee Tunnel. So with the pitching change, three to two New York, two on and one out here in the third. Let's go to BMW and hear what those nice folks have to say. Well, we're back here in the top of the third. Lee Tunnel, the new pitcher. Tunnel with a record of four and two. This is his 16th game. He has an earned run average of 4.75. He has started nine ball games for St. Louis, working 55 innings. He has given up a total of 68 base hits, a lot of hits there, five home runs, while striking out 21, making that walking 20 and striking out 35. And the fastball, a strike to Carter. Tunnel features a fastball and a good curveball. Keeps the ball away to right-handed hitters. Start of the season at Louisville this year was four and one. Outside, matter of fact, he and Pena were battery mates with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Tunnel had a good year in 1983. He was 10 and six from Waco, Texas. Matter of fact, he went to Baylor. Lee Tunnel in relief of Greg Matthews. Two on, one away here in the third. On the outside corner, one ball, two strikes to Carter. On deck batter is Howard Johnson. Strawberry hit his first home run in the major leagues off Lee Tunnel. Back in 1983. Little slider backhanded by Pena. Pena has had some problems the last couple of nights. Four wild pitches, two in Tuesday night's game, and two last night. This ball not in the dirt, it was just above the ground. Pena handcuffed by the pitch. Two and two to Carter. up in the infield. Ozzie Smith with the infield fly rule in effect makes the play. <laughs> he caught it and made like he was going to drop it and then he smiles at Hernandez. One thing he, he, said, uh -uh. he could let that thing drop and the batter's automatically out and the runner's going to advance at their own risk but on artificial turf it might bounce too high. Right here watching now he just lets it go down. <laughs> I like that. That's thinking all the time. <laughs> well, Tunnel is a guy that Howard Johnson should be able to handle. And by handle, meaning he should have some good swings at him. Curveball is inside. From a catcher's viewpoint, you really pick out the danger zones against a hitter against a pitcher in the danger zone here is that low fastball from Tunnel. Is Johnson a low fastball hitter from the left side. 
Another curveball, 2 and 0. Oh. Two outs, two on now after the Mets had their first two runners on. McReynolds sent Coleman deep to left and Carter popped up. The Mets with three runs in the first inning. The Cardinals rebounding with two in their half of the first. It's three to two here in the third. Another curveball, and that gives you an idea of what Pena thinks about Johnson's matchup with Tunnel. Tunnel showing a good breaking ball. Three in a row to Johnson. staring Pena off a lot of times when there are sequence signs as you see Tony with a lot of signs with a runner on second if tunnel doesn't want to throw it he just stares the catcher off this one looped into right center it's playable Ford over and McKee comes in front of him and the Cardinal outfielders almost botched that one up but McGee came from nowhere to take it away from Kurt Ford the Mets had an opportunity to score. They don't, however. They still lead three to two. Middle of the third. We'll be back after this word from Express. Bottom of the third inning. Ozzie Smith will lead it off against Dwight Gooden. The Mets leading three to two. Cardinals with four hits and the Mets with five. Smith opened it up with a double down the left field line in the first inning. Ozzie entering the game batting 290. Fastball on the corner. 0 and 1. Ozzy now with a hit or a walk in 62 of his last 66 games. Really amazing. He has driven in 56 runs now without a home run. to left field and playable there's McReynolds Smith does not have good power the other way from either the left or right side I should blame shallow the other way since those four hits in the first Gooden has retired five Cardinals in a row and the batter Tommy Herr who had a hit by Dave Magadan in the first inning Tommy Herr has five straight hits now Went four for four last night, his first four hit game of the year. Tried to hold up, but couldn't. 0 and 1. Lynn Dykstra reclining royally in the end of the Mets dugout. Talking to Ron Darling there. Kind of a mismatch. Ron has a tough time understanding Lenny, is it? No, I think Lenny can make himself understood very well. <laughs> Does it in a rather different way. One and one to her. Swing and a bad ball. One ball, two strikes. crowd on hand here at Bush Stadium the Cardinals with three rainouts this year and that probably not probably will definitely nullify any chances to draw three million people high hopper for Tuffle on the curveball at six in a row now retired by Gooden and two outs here in the third the better Willie McGee Cardinals have averaged 37,000 870. But now with only 78 home dates with those rainouts, each team, of course, plays 81 home days and 81 away. Tapper towards short. High hop for Johnson, and he guns out McGee. 
So that's seven in a row by Gooden. He has things under control here. The Mets lead it three to two. Steve joins Ralph after this word from manufacturers. Head back here in the top of the fourth inning. I said Steve would join was joining Ralph. I was wrong. Steve's joining me. I'm not Ralph. And here's Steve. Steve's and I'm joining, Steve. Steve's joining somebody. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Hey, Bill? I'm just happy to be here, you know, with either one of you. Dave Magadan leads off the inning and strike swings at a ball for strike one. Mets leading three to two here in the fourth, as all of the scoring happened back in the first inning. Magadan walked his first time up, and Magadan has seven hits in his last ten official at bats over the last three games he's played. And then he takes a fastball right in there for strike two. Breaking ball fouled off. Still strike two. This is going to be Mr. McCarver's debut on Ask Tim and Ralph. Oh? Yes. Oh. Ralph had his debut last night. He got an easy question. We'll see what the question selected for you is this evening. It's not necessarily true if Ralph gets it right that it's easy. Now, you're not going to say the same thing about me. If I get it right, it's easy. No, no, I'm, I'm passing judgment on the question solely on their own individual merit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's right. And the person who will take the heat is the one who selected the question. Swing and a miss and strike three as Magadan goes down. First strikeout for Tunnel. And the first out here in the fourth. A bad ball. You don't see Dave go after too many bad balls, but that curveball down in the dirt. This game being brought to you in part tonight by R.C. Cola. People go out of their way for the taste of R.C. And by your New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut Ford dealers. One out on the top of the fourth. And Dwight Gooden up there to take ball one. Dwight sacrificed. His first time up in the second inning. <laughs> A fastball nub foul on the count one and one. Dwight hitting 167 this year is driven in a run. And he, like I guess most pitchers, loves to swing the bat. And he gets a base hit as he loops one into center field. So a one out single by the doctor. Oh, in the fourth. Gooden has said on many occasions that there are a lot of good hitters that come from Tampa. Wade Boggs, Steve Garvey, Lou Pinella, Dave Magadan, and of course Dwight Gooden. <laughs> that hotbed of hitting talent <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> produces and yet another one. He puts himself right in that group, too. <laughs> And after smoking that ball, I don't blame him. <laughs> Boggs couldn't have done it better himself. Of course not. Both opposite field hitters. <laughs> <laughs> Mookie's one for two. He's doubled and scored, and he lines it hard foul for strike one. Mookie's been in a bit of a slump. He does have that double in the first inning. And counting that double, in his last 18 at-bats, he's only had three base hits. They've all come in this series. One and one. Lee Tunnel has been kicked around. Kicked around with the Pirates and then went down after some early success. And what happens to a young pitcher like that? They find out what's going to get them in trouble and what's going to be a good pitch for them. And you go down, you go back to the minor leagues and you learn how to pitch. And evidently, he has done a good job. He's 2 and 0 in relief. And he's only given up one run in 10 relief appearances. And I think you see more of that in baseball these days because of the less time guys spend in the minors before yeah. they initially come up. Uh huh. Especially pitching because there's so much to learn. A good fastball right on by him. And Mookie struck out of there. Tunnel has struck out two here in the inning. 
Gooden still at first, now it's two away. Let me might add with Whitey Herzog, see, when a left-handed pitcher starts, you have a right-handed pitcher for your for your long man because the lineup that Davy Johnson has set, he set it up for a left-handed pitcher. And here's a good example with Tuffle hitting. Tuffle wouldn't be starting if a right-hander were starting. So you do weaken the lineup a little bit, and that's why Whitey made that move right away. You rarely see a left-hander following a left-hander as a long man. Managers like to stagger them, left, right, left, right. And nobody does it better than Herzog. Ozzie Smith to Tommy Herr, and the inning is over. A hit by Gooden. He is erased on the force, but one left here in the fourth. Still 3-2 to two New York after three and a half. And we'll be back here in St. Louis after this for R.C. Cola. Take a look at the Nissan National League scoreboard. Montreal over Chicago. Bob Tewksbury again. He's 0-3 for the Cubs. He loses that game. Winning pitcher Neil Heaton is 12-4. Houston over Atlanta, 8-5. That's the final. Philadelphia at Pittsburgh, no score in the ninth inning. San Diego over Cincinnati, 12-5 in the sixth. And in the American League, the Nissan American League scoreboard, 6-3 to three, the Yankees over Kansas City at the stadium tonight in New York. That game in the seventh inning. Baltimore over Cleveland, 4-2. to two. And Chicago at Milwaukee, no score in the fourth. The only action here in the major leagues tonight. Terry Pendleton leads off the bottom of the fourth for St. Louis. Mets leading 3-2. to two. Pendleton drove in a run with a base hit to right field back in the first. And he slices one high and deep to left. McReynolds at the wall makes the catch. And as with the ball hit by Kevin McReynolds, right the punt held it. Forward. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think too many stadiums hold this ball either. That ball just gets up there and just hangs in this dead air. Well, the caption for that little girl we can take from Alfred E. Newman. What? Me worry? She does not care about dead air or how balls carry or... When you're that age, you don't have a care in the world. That's right. Fortunately. Kurt Ford, the batter, he's drove in a run with a base hit. And here in the bottom of the fourth, we'll ask Tim McCarver his first question of our new series, Ask Tim and Ralph. I'm in the bucket. All right. That's right. This one is significantly more difficult than the one Ralph had last night. And a one and one count to four. It comes from Ernie Stevens in New York, and he says, in the history of the World Series, only two National League players have hit grand slam home runs in the World Series. Who were the National Leaguers to hit grand salamis in the World Series? Strike two called one and two. The hint is that both players, a hint. All right. both players were members of the New York Mets. Well, now, that's unfair because Ralph being here for 26 years would be more inclined to know that than I would. That's right. Now, you have to speak to Mr. Steve Olbaum, who selects these questions. Man, I'm telling you. I agree with you. Should have been the other way around. He's back there giggling, laughing at me. Maybe some money has changed hands here that we don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> and Ford just did get a piece of that ball, but it looked like he hurt himself as he fouled it off. So the count's still one and two. Again, the question in the history of the World Series, only two National League players, and they were both New York Mets, have hit grand slams. Now, that hint is, is, is misleading. I've got to tell you that even though both of them played for the Mets, they were not necessarily Mets at the time they hit the grand slam home run. Oh, well, I thought it was a 69-73 series. Breaking ball called strike three. Ford punched out of there, and Gooden picks up his third strikeout. First baseman, Jim Lindemann. Boy, this is a good curveball right there. I'll tell you what, this is a diversionary tactic right here. To get me off the hook. I'll talk about something else if I don't know the answer, right? Right. Diversionary tactic is that I called two home runs in the World Series. One by Jim Northrup against Larry Jaster. The other against Kurt Simmons, Joe Pepitone. 
but that still doesn't answer the question, does it? No, it doesn't do you any good either because you happen to be in the National League, too. I know. <laughs> I know. That's why it was a diversionary question. Two out and nobody on for Jim Lindemann, who grounded into an inning-ending force play back in the first. And the curveball is low, and well, it's two a, balls, no strikes. Hmm. Uh, here's another hint. Do I have until the top of the fifth to think about this? Yes, to... yes. You, you get another hint. Neither player, although they were at one time members of the Mets, did this while they were members of the Mets. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I mean, you implied that with your yeah. last statement. Well hit into center field. Mookie Wilson going hard. He won't get it. It's off the wall. Lindemann will cruise into second base with a double with two out here in the bottom of the fourth. He represents the tying run. Well, the high fastball in really a good spot to Lindemann. The Mets try to pitch him inside, but Jim awfully strong. And he's on second now with Pena, the batter, and it looks like the Cardinal bullpen is idle, so I wonder what they're going to do to Tony Pena. Well, they're probably, at least in part, discussing that as Carter went out to talk to Gooden. Tony struck out his first time up against Dwight in the second inning, and Gooden has handled Pena quite well throughout his career, as you and Ralph mentioned earlier. I guess Ducky Medwick's out of the question. He didn't play for the Mets, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good way to get to it. Start by eliminating people. <laughs> <laughs> Might take all night. Lee Tunnel on deck. Ground to the other way. Hernandez will flip to Gooden, and the inning is over. So one hit and one left here in the fourth inning. And we will have to wait till the fifth to hear Tim's guest. <laughs> or guest, rather. <laughs> Three to two, New York. We're back after this for the good old guys. Ralph Kiner back here in St. Louis, where the Mets lead at three to two over the Cardinals as we go to the top half of the fifth inning. And uh, Mr. McCarver is ready to hazard a guess as to the two National Leaguers who have hit grand slams in the World Series. Gil Hodges and Willie Mays. You know, that, those are two guys that I would have guessed also. However, neither one is correct. <laughs> okay. You, you and I would go right in the tank together. On Gil this Hodges, uh, originally the first baseman, though, in 62, and I figured it, he played in all those Dodgers World Series. I don't remember a grand slam by him. Willie Mays with the Giants. Well, the actual answers are, the first one was Chuck Hiller. Yeah. Who was a member of the 62 yeah. Giants. 62, yeah. And the other that. one was, and Bill was trying to give you a hint by Ken, Ken Boyer. Boyer. Yeah. In 64. Against, against Al Downing, against, he was my teammate. Exactly. Gosh, what a yo-yo. Well, that's, that's how it happens. You know, sometimes when the pressure's on, you just go into vapor lock. You, you know. don't have to, you don't, do not have to add <laughs> insult to injury. <laughs> I was there. I Good. Mean, Good question by Ernie yeah, Stevens. Though. Excellent. Very excellent. good. Much better than the one last night. Hernandez leading off the fifth inning. I even got the one last night. Keith one for two extended his hitting streak to eight games with a single to left field in the third inning. Ken Boyer hit his in game four to win it off Al Downing in the sixth inning of game four. The Yankees had a three nothing lead and Chuck Hiller I believe hit his off Whitey Ford in the 62 series. At Yankee Stadium, both of them. No, I know all the, you know, I've got all the recipe for all the ancillary things, but it all comes not back the now. The keys, yeah. A 2-1 pitch grounded weakly to her. Tom throws him out, one away. So if you want to play Ask Tim and Ralph, all you have to do is send your baseball questions on a postcard to Ask Tim and Ralph, WWOR TV, 9 Broadcast Plaza, C. Caucus, New Jersey, 07094. And if your question is selected and used on the air, you'll receive a copy of both Ralph Kiner's Kiner's Corner and Tim McCarver's Oh Baby, I Love It. So send your questions to WWOR TV, Ask Tim and Ralph, 9 Broadcast Plaza, C. Caucus, New Jersey, 07094. Ralph's back there. He looks like the cat. Who ate the canary? <laughs> He's one up on me after two, after one question. I think you better check with Steve Olbaum and see if Ellen. there's not a little extra coin in his pocket. It's a conspiracy. Daryl Strawberry takes a strike. Daryl batting with one out and nobody on has walked and scored and had an infield single in the third. 
Darrell also now with an eight game hitting streak. One and one. So Ernie Stevens will receive a copy of each book for sending in the question. I'd like to say he will receive the books because Tim didn't get the question right, but <laughs> he'll get the books. Keep it up. Keep he'll get it up. the books <laughs> because his question was selected. <laughs> now that was a tough one. It really was. Still, I'm surprised you didn't. Breaking ball fouled off. Two and two to Darrell. You're watching Mets Baseball 87 on WWOR TV, Secaucus, New Jersey. Ball three. So a full count to Strawberry. A 3-2 Mets lead here in the fifth inning with one out and nobody on. Kevin McReynolds is on deck. Breaking ball on a 3-2 pitch that Darrell fouls off. Still full count. This ball game started out with a bang and now it's really settled into tunnel and good and evening. Both pitchers totally in control. That's high so Strawberry walks for the second time in the ball game. He's on base three at bats in a row. First walk issued by tunnel and he'll be at first with one out for Kevin McReynolds who has That's tripled driving in two scored a run and just missed a home run to left field that was caught by Vince Coleman at the base of the wall. Darrell gets some attention. Strawberry with 17 stolen bases. But does not take a big lead. Side ball one. See, uh, Tunnel, if he has a pattern now, he's different than he was at Pittsburgh. I've seen him several times on television. He works right handers away. He wants to nick and nick and nick that outside corner if he yeah. can. Even though he, uh, Pena set up inside on McReynolds then, and Kevin did take a peek at Tony. Nope, here's a fastball inside here. Too far inside, however, and the count two and zero. Oh. A lot of times, catchers will signal the pitch and location with one finger. The index finger means inside to the right-hander, and the pinky means outside. He wants this one away, but it comes in, and McReynolds fouls it off, so it's two and one. And catchers have to be patient. I mean. Pitchers aren't going to get it exactly where they want to. Sometimes there's a lot of action on the pitches and ball tails in as that one did. Tony was sitting outside, but it tailed in on McReynolds. Breaking ball here. Strawberry running and the pitch called a strike. And Darrell is in there as the ball pops out of Tom Hur's glove. So Strawberry with his 18th stolen base and the first of the ball game. Ball seemed to hit Darrell near the elbow. Strawberry and her, as you see Darrell take a peek, and that's proper. Ball appeared to hit Strawberry in the elbow. He's all right, though. Ball and glove arrive at the same time, and Darrell with his 18th stolen base. He's only two shy of his fourth consecutive 2020 year. So the count two and two to McReynolds with Darrell now at second base and still only one out. And a fastball driven to center field but McGee right there. Strawberry tagging going to third. The throw will not be in time. And Darrell almost nonchalanted himself into an out. He sure did. 
I'll tell you, you just don't take anything for granted. And Darrell almost takes this for granted. Watch. Well, that would have been very embarrassing, and you don't want normal things like that to end up embarrassing you, and it was almost a very embarrassing moment for Strawberry. Fortunately for Darrell and the Mets, however, he is at third. Two out now for Gary Carter, who is one for two with an RBI base hit back in the first. On the corner for strike one. Carter's RBI his 51st of the year and he has picked up that RBI pace significantly in the last couple of weeks. Grounded foul behind the plate and the count 0 and 2. There was a time when you could pitch Gary Carter inside but with Gary now even more of an arm hitter than he ever has been you just stay away from him not that you're going to make every pitch away and he's not going to get a hit but it'd be crazy to come inside now there's really no need for it but he's going to do it and it's way inside ball one Carter's having a very good series in fact right now with his one for two in this game he is six for twelve dollar to a donut here pal he goes back outside he's not going to try to get him out of way that was just a show me pitch perfect state to do it in <laughs> the state of Missouri of course fastball popped up out of play down the right field line and it was outside so the count remains one and two very difficult with Carter's setup in the batter's box and his approach to the ball for him to hit the ball the other way with any kind of effectiveness. So pitching him away makes a great deal of sense. Strawberry at third with two out. Mets leading three to two here in the fifth inning. Way outside. And the count now two and two. Howard Johnson on deck. back inside dangerous and Carter nearly takes Strawberry's foot off as he rips it foul yeah that's a bad call right there you just do not mess with Carter inside you saw him about turn everybody around on the left side especially with tunnel because his fastball is going to be down and in watch this tracer get up Daryl look out Sam <laughs> he's scattering everybody those grenade balls down there <laughs> Still 2-2 two -two to Gary. Coming back inside. Way inside. So three and two, flirting with danger again. And we'll see what they do with a full and, count and two out. There are just too many elements against that. We talked about Gary being the inside hitter that he is right now. Tunnel likes to keep the ball away. Now they're going back outside with a breaking ball. And Gary lines it into center field for a base hit. Strawberry trots home from third, and the Mets take a two-run lead, 4-2, to two, with a two-out single by Carter, his second RBI of the game. What a big hit right there. All of the runs scored tonight have been scored with two outs. The two-out triple by McReynolds, and then Carter following with an RBI single, and now the two-out RBI by Carter again, and both Cardinal runs scoring with two outs. This is a real hanger here, and a bullet back up the middle. A big hit for Gary Carter. So Carter now with 52 RBIs. The Mets up by two, still two out. Carter at first for Howard Johnson, who's 0 for 2. And a big swing and a miss for strike one. Mojo working on a five game hitting streak coming into the game hitting 529 over that five game streak. Another breaking ball missed going to 
He's only thrown him one fastball out of six pitches. If you remember, three out of four the last time, and Tunnel had to shake Pena off to get that fastball. So it's obvious Pena, and you really can't quibble with that line of reasoning because Howard is an outstanding fastball hitter. And three straight curveballs take care of Howard Johnson. But the Mets pick up a run on a walk, a stolen base, and a base hit by Carter here in the inning. And after four and a half, it's now New York four, St. Louis two, as the Mets try to sweep it. We'll be back to St. Louis after this. Here's a report from Tidewater tonight. David Cohn pitched at Tidewater tonight, rehabilitating from the broken finger. And he pitched two innings, gave up no hits, one unearned run. He did walk three. He also struck out three in two innings. And he will throw again on Monday against Columbus. And he experienced no problems in throwing. In that same game, or prior to that game tonight in Tidewater, Rick Aguilera threw batting practice. So both those pitchers trying to get back with the big club. And as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, with the Mets now leading four to two, once again to call it, here's Tim. All right, Steve, thanks a lot. Lee Tunnel, really not a surprise, even though the Cardinals trail here in the fifth. Tunnel leading off here in the fifth inning. Not that he's that good a hitter. But Whitey Herzog trying to conserve on his bullpen and the high fastball swinging a miss 0 and 1. Lee needs some pine tar and or rosin. His hands have got to have a lot of perspiration on him, and if you don't have anything on the bat, you have a hard time holding on to it without batting gloves or some substance. Sometimes in the hot and humid nights, you just can't find a dry spot on the uniform. Rosin and pine tar, obviously necessary nights like tonight even though it's cooler than it has been in the past couple of nights pop fly right side and there's Tim Tuffle and he makes the play so one away here in the fifth and that'll bring up Vince Coleman Channel 9 Sports and Gary Carter have teamed up to fight leukemia and related diseases you can join that team by contributing a $15 check to the Leukemia Society of America sports cap 205 Lexington Avenue, New York 10016. You will receive a wool baseball cap carrying the Channel 9 Sports logo for your donation. Mitt, the Mets on top, four to two. That is Bill Robinson. It looks like Bill Lahman. Her ball is low. Talking about their business with their business partners. Bill Robinson is a proponent of having your knuckles aligned. There are others, such as Rod Carew, who think differently in teaching hitting. Carew is more of the, what he calls the opposing palms theory. And I think that might have been what Bill was talking about with Bill Allman was. California, Florida approach. That's right? <laughs> Line up opposing palms. I like it. <laughs> Almost a fair ball. Belatedly called by Paul Rungi. Paul looked like he was modeling pants when he called that. <laughs> and Gary Carter and Joe West having a chuckle. <laughs> Follow the dancing umpire. That ball's fair, and then it's foul, and Paul's trying to get out of the way and make the call at the same time. He's, his first priority, however, was getting out of the way. Perfectly reasonable approach. <laughs> Still one and two to Coleman, four to two New York on top. Fastball, just a little low, so it's two and two. With one out in the first inning, four of five Cardinals got hits for their two runs. Since that time, only a double by Jim Lindemann in the fourth inning has broken the otherwise perfect streak for good, and then he gets Coleman for the second time in a row on the curveball. 
Well, Lord Charles has been in attendance here at Bush Stadium tonight, and Dwight Gooden breaks off another beauty. And Vince Coleman's seen about all of that he wants to see for quite a while. So Chuck strikes again, and here's Ozzy Smith. I guess if they can call him Prince Charlie, we could call it Lord Chuck. Lord Lord Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> Curveball is low. Want to know? There's Jack Clark. Johnny Lee Lewis, the ex-Met, broke up Jim Maloney's no-hitter with a home run in the 11th back in 1965, and Whitey Herzog flanking Jack. Jack's going to miss a couple of days with contusions in his ribs, the result of a collision with Mookie Wilson last night. It's 2-0 to Ozzie Smith. Ozzie one for two on the evening. Grounded right side. Good play, Hernandez. Over to Gooden covering. So another strong inning by Gooden. He has retired the Cardinals in order three times tonight. And after five, it's four to two New York. And we'll be back after this work. And leads it off against Lee Tunnel here in the top of the sixth inning. The Mets with seven hits. St. Louis with five. It's four to two New York. The Mets trying to sweep. Dave 0 for 1 is yet to put a ball in play as he walked in the second and struck out in the fourth. One and one to Magadan. Dave, like Howard Johnson, has received a rather steady diet of breaking balls this evening. Fastball grounded up the middle, and Ozzie Smith throws out Magadan one away. And the better Dwight Gooden. Gooden one for one. He sacrificed in the second. And single the center in the fourth. <laughs> For president of what? I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> well, I hope you're enjoying our broadcast tonight. I'm Tim McCarver along with Steve Zabriskie, Ralph Kiner. And we'll be back from Montreal on Saturday evening, Sunday afternoon when those red hot and tough Montreal Expos battle the Mets. Big three-game series up there at the Big O. A lot of folks from New York, I'm sure, will be up there. Grounded to Smith again. Two consecutive assists for Ozzie. And a batter, Mookie Wilson. And in case you had not heard, Montreal won again today, yeah. beating Chicago. So the Expos now have snuck up to within four and a half games. They will only be Four games out if the Mets hold on and win this game. And the Mets, of course, will only be five and a half games out if they, as they are still in third place. I'll tell you, a team is playing very good baseball in this division, along with the Expos, the Philadelphia Phillies. Only ten games back, and I say only, because they are pointing up. I don't know what happened tonight. It was nothing, nothing top of the night. Mike Dunn had a, a no-hitter through six innings, but the Phillies playing very good baseball. Final, and we have it in. The Phillies one to nothing. Losing pitcher John Smiley, Glenn Wilson with a game-winning RBI, his ninth, and Bruce Ruffin with a shutout. Ruffin now nine and seven. So watch those Phillies. And another save for Bedrosian, who leads the National League now with 29. Fastball is inside, so it's two and one to Wilson. A lot of times you kind of hide back in the pack, you know, and nobody knows what's happening. And then all of a sudden you're in the thick of things. The Mets, ten and a half out, for instance, only about three weeks ago. And if they win tonight, they'll cut the lead in half. So it can keep you honest. The Cardinals have lost six in a row, and who would have thunk it? Curveball grounded toward first, easily fielded by Lindemann. And an easy inning for Tunnel. It's four to two, New York, middle of the sixth. We'll be back after this word from Nissan. <laughs> Where little dreamers go. And I'll bet this afternoon he just couldn't wait to get to this ball That's park. Right. <laughs> he asked his mom about 8,000 questions. When are we leaving? When do I eat? I'll get out of the pool in a minute. I don't want to take a bath. <laughs> Assorted other answers for young men and young ladies and young ladies Tom Hurd. I was 
looking at it from the puppy dog tails end of it. <laughs> Tommy heard the batter. Tommy on the evening is one for two with a run scored. He singled in the first inning. All of the noise was heard from the Cardinals in the first for their five hits and both runs. Only one hit since then given up by Gooden. Dwight looking for his eighth victory of the year. Kevin McReynolds with two RBIs. Gary Carter with two RBIs. Ball two to her. And even though the Cardinals are facing perhaps their seventh straight loss, they continue to draw extremely well. There are 50,512 people here tonight. 48,000, a little over 48,000 of them paid to get in here. Little tapper off the foot of Tommy Herr. So it's two and one to Tom from Lancaster, PA. What lovely country that is, Amish country. A lot of the folks in that area do not use electricity or mechanical engines for that matter. They so we can't so things. we can't tell them hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's not too far from where you live, though, is it? No, nope. about about 80 miles. ball left field and playable McReynolds in and he makes the play so there's one away here in the sixth fans this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Mets and WWOR TV and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience any publication reproduction retransmission or other use of the pictures descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets and WWOR TV is prohibited Willie McGee, the batter. And he takes a fastball high, even though McGee is batting 250 against the Mets this year. He has had only one hit in this series, and he has stranded 10 runners in his last six at bats. Ripped, however, right field, fair ball. Strawberry. Strong throw, Darrell did what he could, but no way you get the fleet-footed McGee. Double number 21 for Willie on the year. And all Willie McGee needed was to come up with no one on base. That's been his big problem, too many guys on base. Finally, he comes up with the bases empty and gets a base hit. And he really rocketed that ball into the corner. Howard Johnson trying to get him off the bag to no avail. Yeah, those hands and bat came from nowhere then. And Terry Pendleton is having a very, very good year. He's one for two with an RBI, his 61st. Batting right around the 310 level. A lot of key hits for Terry this year. In fact, he's hitting 333 with runners in scoring position, and he has one there now. He's six for 39, however, against good and lifetime. Curve ball is low. Of course, part of that lifetime, the last two years, of course, and Terry was not having a good year, so. Lifetime stats against a certain pitcher can be deceptive because Pendleton clearly a better hitter now than he was the last two years. Strike one, one and one. Bottom of the six, four to two, New York. Pendleton's first year in the big leagues, the Mets couldn't get him out. That at 424 in half a season. Tapped foul, so Terry in the hole, one and two. The Cardinals, as a team, have walked more than anybody in the National League, and they've struck out the fewest times. Pretty good combos. I beg your pardon. That is incorrect on the strikeouts. There are two teams ahead of the Cardinals in strikeouts. That's Atlanta 
and Montreal have struck out fewer times, but they do lead the league in bases on balls and a number of other categories. And consequently, in part, they also lead the league in batting average as a team at 277. One ball, two strikes, one out, McGee at second. Popped up left side in foul territory. Johnson, Magadan, and McReynolds converging, but they come up empty. All had a long way to run for that ball. Well, off the bat of the left-handed hitter, this ball just keeps slicing away, 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 as it also moves out toward the outfield. And as you see, it drops right against the barrier. That's that area where those two remarkable catches were made, one in the National League Championship Series in 85 and the other in the World Series. They were made by Terry Pendleton. One was Greg Brock, and I believe the other was Steve Balboni. I'm not sure. Curveball hit deep to center. Wilson back. Wrong part of the park, however, for Pendleton. And Wilson and McGee's going to go to third. And they're now two outs. Right fielder, Kurt Ford. Well, we've seen some balls tonight that have been hit a long way. I and mean, in a lot of other parks, possibly any other park in the National League, a couple of them, maybe not this one, but a couple of them would have been home runs. This ball hit about 400 feet, but it's 414 to straightaway center. So Pendleton has hit three balls well, but only one hit to show for it, and the batter Kurt Ford. Kurt drove in a run in the first with a single to left field. He's one for two. Entered the game batting 307, and he does have power. Don't let that diminutive stature fool you. Good curveball there, 0-1. Gooden has had his best curveball of the year tonight. I, I would think. agree. And he's had it really from the first inning, even though he was hit for four runs, or rather four hits, when the Cardinals scored two runs in the first. Well, that just made Kurt Ford buckle right there. He didn't know what to do. Wow. Watch his legs. Whoops, whoop, whoo. You want to swing, but you're not sure where the ball is, so you can't. Curveball is outside, so three straight curves to Kurt Ford. Swing and a miss. He got him after three straight curveballs. The high rider gets Ford. It's four to two New York after six. Ralph joins Steve after this word from Shearson Lehman Brothers. Among the 50,512 who are here tonight, that young lady who has managed to hang in there past 9.30 Central Time. And she looks like she's fading, however. This one, however, faded some time ago. At least now his mouth is closed. <laughs> He's been asleep for innings. It's the seventh inning. It's four to two New York. And back in once again, here's the Hall of Famer, Ralph Kiner. Okay, Steve Sabrisky, and I guess that boy with his mouth closed is safe from the dreaded infield fly. <laughs> and the first pitch to Tim Teffel by Lee Tunnel is a ball. It's one ball and no strikes. Curveball hit hard but foul down the line. Steve, I want you to know that my lawyer will be contacting you very shortly, and I am taking umbrage, and that's not a very good bridge if you're going to Greenwich, about the fact that you were giving all those hints to Tim McCarver on those two Grand Slam home runs. Now, you have to admit, Ralphie, that that question was a little more difficult than the one you had to field last night. Only because you happen to know the answer to the question last night. Now, you can't judge it by that. There are a lot of people that did not know that Johnny Vandermeer was a man that has pitched the only two back-to-back, no-hit, no-run games. And a foul ball in the count stays at one and two. Yes, but if I'm going to be the one to ask the questions, I am, in essence, sitting 
as the official. I'm officiating here. You're the arbitrator? That's right. I'm the one that's sitting in arbitration. Then my case is rested. <laughs> Very badly. <laughs> that's your second grievance, right? <laughs> that's right. Curveball again hit foul down the line. I will say this in all honesty. I got Chuck Hiller. But I did not know about Boyer. And I figured that Tim McCarver would know about Boyer because he played with him in that game. But I thought he'd have trouble with Chuck Hiller. Not having played with Chuck. One and two. The count to Tim Tuffle. And he's hit by a pitch ball. So the Mets get their lead batter on. As far as Tuffle is concerned. The hard way. And that will bring up Keith Hernandez. Well, the crowd buzzing here, and there's been a lot of talk and a lot written about batters being hit by pitches and all the bean brawls that have gone on. There's no intent, apparently, on Tunnel's part under the circumstances. You certainly would not want to put on another runner when you're in the seventh inning already trailing by two. And I think really too much has been made of the incidences that have happened in baseball. Pitchers have always pitched inside. They need to pitch inside to be effective. And I'll say it again. I think the reason there are more fights is because the rule governing it is wrong. And that rule being that you cannot retaliate against the other team when your member has been knocked down. If you do, you're automatically ejected. So the only way that you can retaliate is to fight, to charge the mound. And that's why there are, I think, more fights now over it than ever before. Hernandez hitting 296 coming in. The runner goes with the pitch, but the ball fouled on the hit and run play. So Tuffle back to first. <laughs> Bill Dolly throwing in the bullpen for St. Louis. The starting pitcher for this game was Greg Matthews. Greg lasted two and a third innings. Was charged with three runs, gave up five hits. Tunnel brought in in the third with one out has been charged with one run on two hits. He has worked three and two thirds innings coming into this game. One strike to count to Keith Hernandez. Keith one for three tonight. And the pitch back to Keith hit on the ground to her. It should be an easy double play and is. Her to Smith to Lindemann. And the double play races the base run. On the previous pitch, Tuffle was running, but here he is not running. And consequently, it is turned very effectively by the Cardinals. Ozzie Smith, very difficult to uh, bother at second base when he comes across that bag. He's so acrobatic that he's able to get out of the way almost every time. So with the Mets leading four to two and two men out here in the seventh, the batter will be Daryl Strawberry. Daryl has walked twice. He also has had an infield base hit. And Daryl has scored two runs after the walks. And the change up bounced out to the first base side. Lindemann throwing over to Tunnel and Tunnel. Doesn't get to the bag. Well, Strawberry should be credited with an infield base hit on the call by Gary Darley. Well, Lindemann. I think took a little more time than Tunnel anticipated, and the throw was behind Tunnel. But I think Tunnel beat Strawberry to the bag even at that. You think he got his foot in the bag? Well, well, we may see it better from this angle. Strawberry running very hard down the line. Tunnel knew he had to get over in a hurry, but then he had to wait for the ball. And it looked to me like he just did beat him, and I think that was probably what Gary Darling was saying, was that he did not touch the bag. And I'm going by Tunnel's response to Darling. Now Strawberry burning with a pitch. No chance for the catcher, Pena. And Strawberry has his second stolen base. Well, the breaking ball in the dirt, Darrell had a huge jump. And the combination of that jump and the breaking ball gave Pena no opportunity to throw out Darrell. Darrell now with 19 stolen bases. The count. 
One ball and no strikes on Kevin McReynolds, who tripled in two runs in the first. Flight out the deep left field in the third with two runners on, and flight out the center field in the fifth. Reynolds now in his last 19 ball games with 21 runs better did. And the catcher not able to get together with Lee Tunnel. The Mets are playing their 101st game. They have a record through 100 games this year of 55 and 45. Last year, they had a record of 68 and 32 in their first 100 games. The best record ever, the 1902 Pittsburgh Pirates, 75 and 25. And in sort of modern day baseball, the 1970 Reds had a record of 70 and 30 through their first 100 games. Dodgers in 42, 71 and 29. And that pitch a ball, it's two balls, no strikes. Kevin McReynolds. Kevin with the game winning RBI in this ball game as it stands right now Mets leading four to two and the curveball a call strike two and one that pitch might have been low tunnel looks like he's happy he got the call and it was a little bit of a delayed call by Joe West Cowboy Joe tunnel does not want to throw McReynolds a fastball. Kevin was set up for the fastball, and when he didn't get it, he took the pitch. And this pitch grounded foul, so it's two and two. And that was another breaking ball. This three-game series has drawn 141,333 paid. And it's drawn over 150,000 total. They've averaged 50,000 a night. They had 52,000 the first night, 48,000 last night, and 50,000 tonight. And again, the curveball, and McReynolds chases it, and that ends the inning. So no runs, one hit, batter hit by a pitch ball, a double play, one man left in scoring position. The score at the end is six and a half. The Mets four, and the St. Louis Cardinals two. Now here's a word from Price. It's ninth, the Mets against the Chicago Cubs. Game time at 135. It's MetLife Adult Jersey Day as all fans 15 and over will receive a specially designed three-quarter sleeve V-neck baseball under jersey courtesy of MetLife. Tickets are available at all Ticketron outlets, Shea Stadium's advanced ticket window, or by calling 718-507-TIXX during regular business hours for all ticket information. And the Mets are going to be returning home after this road trip. And on Monday, August 3rd, at this upcoming Monday, they'll be taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, three night games, all beginning at 7.35. And on Monday night, all fans will receive a Mets nylon sports bag, courtesy of R.C. Cola. Then the Chicago Cubs come into town Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Big weekend series, August 6th through the 9th. Night games on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday night, 7.05 start time. And that Sunday, 1.35 afternoon game when all fans will receive 15 and over. That's specially designed under jersey, courtesy of MetLife. And then it's the Montreal Expos, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, August 10th through the 12th. Monday and Tuesday are night games, and Wednesday, August 12th, a 1.35 start. So remember that Sunday, August 9th, against the Chicago Cubs, adult MetLife Jersey Day is a sellout, but tickets for all other games are available at Ticketron Outlets, Shea Stadium's advanced ticket window, or call 718-507-TIXX during regular business hours for ticket information. Mets leading by a score of 4-2, to bottom half of the seventh inning, and Jim Lindemann... The lead it off for the Cardinals. Lindemann doubled in the fourth inning. One of two hits that Dwight Gooden has given up since the first. Lindemann in this game, one for two, made the last out in the first inning. And had a two-out double in the fourth. Gooden has struck out five. He has not walked the batter. And he starts out with a fastball, a fly ball to right. Plenty of room for Strawberry. 
And Darrell makes a catch. So one pitch and one away. And that'll bring up Tony Pena. Catcher Tony has had three complete games this year. One of them a shutout. In his major league career, he's had 38 complete games with 14 shutouts. So Pena coming up. Pena has struck out and grounded out. And the free swinger Pena will be followed by a pinch hitter. So the first pitch ball one is good and works to the former Pittsburgh Pirate. Fastball is hit out to right field. Strawberry into the corner, way back in the corner, and it's off the wall. Darrell having trouble with it. Pena going for three, and he'll go in standing up. Strawberry thought he had a chance on this ball all the way. He checks the wall properly. He's ready to jump, but then he sees that he's not going to be able to get it. And I think maybe he lost it at the last minute in trying to pick up the ball once again. Watch where it hits on the wall. It hit very close to him. It looked as if he didn't see the ball at the very last minute, or he might have been able to catch it. He certainly is tall enough, judging by where that ball hit on the wall. And it's a triple all the way for Tony Pena, who's at third with one out. And John Morris is going to pinch hit for Lee Tunnel. John Morris, the pinch hitter, representing the time run. Morris is hitting 282. He has two homers and 12 RBIs. And as a pinch hitter, he's six for 17 with six pinch hit RBIs. And Bill Dolly starting to throw in the bullpen once again. And then the runner at third with one away. His fourth three base hit of the year and the first pitch by Gooden the curveball for ball one. The pinch hitter. That's playing their infield back with the exception of the third baseman, Dave Magadan. And that pitch makes a count one ball and one strike. Your favorite animated. Well, you know, we kid Fred Bird a lot, but he really is probably the worst mascot in <laughs> baseball. Now the pitch back hit at the second baseman Tuffle a run will score as Tuffle feels the ball and picks up the out. So Pena scores and the Cardinals move to within one of the Mets with two men out here in the seventh inning. And the seventh pinch hit RBI by John Morris a sharp one hopper and had the Mets been playing the infield in. Obviously, it's a more difficult play for the infielders. That ball probably would have been hit right at Tuffle, even if he was playing in. It would have made it a more difficult stop. But that's the big advantage of having a two-run lead instead of a one-run lead. You can play for the out in that situation, even with a runner at third. And that infield in makes a hitter, a four-run hitter out of a 300 hitter. Now, another ground ball to Tuffle as they get the very dangerous Coleman out. Coleman now 0 for 4 and has not been on base in this game. So one run scoring on the triple and no one left on base to score at the end of seven. The Mets four, the Cardinals three. Now here's a ball game for St. Louis, Bill Dolly. Dolly has a record of four and seven and an ERA of 4.01. He's making his 44th appearance. He's picked up two saves. He's worked 74 innings, walking 25, striking out 57 and giving up nine home runs along with 33 earned runs and 69 base hits and his first batter will be Gary Carter Carter with two hits and three at bats and the first pitch a breaking ball for ball one you're watching Mets baseball 87 on WWOR TV Secaucus New Jersey. 
a fine job done by Lee Tunnel out of the bullpen in relief of Greg Matthews for St. Louis. Tunnel pitched four and two thirds, gave up a run on two hits, and he struck out three. This one off the end of the bat over to backhand at Lindemann. He throws to Dolly, and Dolly completes the play. Good play by both the first baseman and pitcher. This play is supposed to be routine, but it rarely is, and that's why it's worked on from day one of spring training, really, practicing with the first baseman and the pitcher covering so that when the game time rolls around, it will be almost routine. So one away here in the top of the eighth inning, the Mets leading four to three, and the batter now, Howard Johnson. Howard 0 for three in this game. Five for 12 in this series with the game-winning home run in the 10th inning last night. Mets have four runs on eight hits. They made no errors. The Cardinals three runs on seven hits, and they made no errors. And Dolly with a fastball, they called a strike. Howard Johnson's been looking for a fastball to hit all night. And he got one. Surprised him. Sort of a good call by Pena under the circumstances. Now the off-speed pitch in the dirt. One ball, one strike. Second appearance in this series. He worked three in the third innings last night. Gave up no runs on two hits and struck out two. And the fastball for a ball. Two and one. Howard Johnson hitting 273, a career high. With 24 home runs and 60 RBIs, that too, a career high. And this ball hit deep to right. It could be gone. It is going goodbye. Howard Johnson with a long home run, and the Mets lead it by a score of five to three. Herzog out of the dugout immediately and he's going to home plate umpire Joe West and Tony Pena wants the bat that Howard Johnson used and he's going to complain I think about pine tar being too far up no he's looking at the barrel of the bat and they're confiscating the bat that Howard Johnson used now that'll go to the National League office and they will inspect the bat to see if there is anything unusual about it. Now David Johnson coming out to protest. Now if you're wondering what happens to the home run here the home run stands. There's no way that they take a hit away from the player. After the fact. Now Howard Johnson may not have an illegal bat and the way he's swinging it. I don't blame him for not wanting to give it up. I mean, you know, hitters are particular about a particular bat, especially when they're going as well as Howard Johnson is. And Hojo, when Tony Pena grabbed it, boy, he didn't want to let hold of it. They had a little tug of war going there for a few minutes. That is the third home run that Johnson has hit against the Cardinals this, this year. And his sixth hit in this series. Dave Magadan is ball one. Magadan in this game is 0 for 2 with a walk. Dolly giving up his 10th home run of the year, and that's ball two. Tim McCarver caught something in the conversation that Davey Johnson had with Gary Carter. Davey went to Gary right away and told him to check the bat of the first hitter for St. Louis in the bottom half of this inning. I can't believe that an umpire can take your bat away with no cause. Maybe Tony Pena pointed out something to Joe West that Joe saw. He looked at the end of the bat. Now Johnson has hit his home run. Here's the replay. And after the home run and Johnson scoring, 
Whitey Herzog came out of the dugout. The pitch back a ball, ball three and all. That was Johnson's 25th homer of the year. He has 61 RBIs now. And he's having, obviously, a career year. And one right up the middle for a base hit. So Magadan comes through with a single. His first hit of the game. All right, here's the home run again. A fastball. Hojo's been looking for one all night. He finally gets one, and boy, does he turn on it deep up in the mezzanine. Whitey Herzog came out of the dugout before Howard Johnson had finished rounding the bases. Now Hojo's getting to third base, and it's about this time that Whitey's coming out of the dugout and going right to Joe West, the home plate umpire. Pena has already picked up the bat. And now the bunt by Dwight Gooden fielded, and he is out at first base on the sacrifice as Magadan goes down to second. Now here we go back to the tape where Whitey has come out of the dugout. Johnson said it. Now he wants the bat. Pena says, no, I'm going to keep it. Hojo says, you can't keep my bat. Pena says, yes, I can. I want the umpire to look at it. So he shows it to Joe West. Now, West is taking it out of the game before he really even inspects it. And I'm with you, Ralph. I don't know if he can. What cause does he have to confiscate the bat? Whitey Herzog never really got an opportunity to say anything before the fact because Pena sort of took care of it. And Herzog saying to Pena, grab that bat, and he did. Now they're going to walk Mookie Wilson intentionally with a first base open. Mets leading 5-3, bottom half of the eighth. And Mookie Wilson with ball two. I'll tell you one thing about Whitey. He does not miss a trick. And if he can't think of a trick, he'll make one up. Think one, think of one that's in the record book or in the rule book. Well, Howard Johnson has really hurt the Cardinals the last couple of years. He had, of course, the game-winning two-run homer in the 10th last night. And he's had a lot of big hits in his short career in the National League so far in this ballpark. Pat Perry warming in the bullpen. And Whitey trying to get every edge he can going right after Hojo. Whitey Herzog at one time worked for the Mets, was a third-base coach, also ran their farm system. And Tim Tuffle, the batter, and he takes a curveball, strike one. Tuffle hitting an even 340 for the year. In this game, he's 0 for 3 and was hit by a pitch ball. And Dolly back with another breaking ball, but this one out of the strike zone. One ball, one strike. One and one, the count to Tuffle. And did he swing? And there's a swinging strike, so the count goes to one and two. First base umpire Gary Darling making the call. Runners at first and second. Two men out, Mets leading 5-3, and the fastball swung on a miss, and that'll do it. One run and a home run by Johnson. There were two hits and two men left on base. And the score at the end of seven and a half innings, the Mets five, the St. Louis Cardinals three. Now here's a word from the good old guy. Well, we're going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Whitey Herzog out talking to third base umpire Paul Rungi and home plate umpire Joe West. Herzog asking that they, that Howard Johnson's bat be taken out of the ball game and the umpires complying with his request. Now they're out there talking about this. I'd have to think, Steve, that Davey Johnson's got to come up with the same kind of a question. Here's the action on the replay. I think Howard Johnson thought that Joe West was going to check his bat. He didn't even look at it. No, he just took it out. I, I really don't think. Now Davey Johnson is back out. After Whitey Herzog had a conversation with Joe West and Paul Rungi, Davey has now come out. You see Howard complaining. Now this is live, and Davey is now talking to home plate umpire Joe West and the crew chief, Paul Rungi, who's at third base tonight. I, 
if I were Davey, I would have wanted, been out, wanted to have been out there when Whitey was having his conversation. But Davey waited until Whitey was through. Now he goes out and talks to the same umpires. Now what happens if Howard Johnson gets another at bat in the ninth inning and he's not allowed to use that bat? I would have to think they got to find something illegal with that bat before they can take it out. You can't take a pitcher out of the ball game if you don't catch him actually doing something to the ball even though you see the results of what took place. That's right. And Davey's got a, a valid argument here in the fact that if nothing is found to be wrong with the bat how can you remove it from play. Now pine tar more than 18 inches up from the end you can take the bat out of play. That's a violation or of clean the rule. It up. Or clean the pine tar off. Exactly. But here that back was not even examined. It was just arbitrarily taken away from Howard Johnson and removed from play. But the one thing the Mets don't want to lose here, their concentration on the ball game. You can't let the bat be the incident that causes you to lose your concentration. The Mets going to the bottom of the eighth, leading by a score of five to three. Gooden is ready to pitch. And the psychological effects of this is exactly what Whitey Herzog is looking for. Here's Whitey again. This is right after Howard Johnson's home run. And the tug of war that ensued. Now, is Howard saying check the bat? But does Joe West check the bat? No. Not really. He looks at it with the mask on and then he just says all right we'll just take it out of play put it in the umpire's room and there you go now Hojo's having a conversation right now with Paul Rungi as David Johnson got his two cents in but anyway Ozzy Smith's going to lead off the bottom of the eighth five to three New York and you're right Ralph the task at hand is what's most important the Mets are trying to sweep pull to within five and a half on the night has doubled in three at bats and a fastball I guess is ball one fastball slapped through the hole a base hit to left field Johnson guarding near the line and a base hit between Johnson and Allman, the shortstop. As Allman has come in the ball game with Magadan going out, Johnson moving to third, and the time run is at the plate. Ozzy Smith slapping that ball through the hole. If there's one thing the Cardinals have done this year better than any other club in the National League, it's come from behind and win games in the late innings. 35 times in their 61 victories. Coming from behind. Tom Herr won for three. With his base hit in the first inning when he also scored, he had reached base in seven straight plate appearances, but he's 0 for 2 since then. Grounded foul for strike one. Tom hitting 270 at the moment. Last night, when he got four base hits, he broke a slump that included an 0 for 13 prior to the first base hit last night. He had 15 hits in his last 100 in bats. That's 150. And when you're batting in that number three spot in anybody's batting order, you can't afford to hit 150. But it's Tom Herr who represents the tying run with nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Ozzie Smith at first. A fastball right in there. Strike two. All and two. Dwight Gooden trying to beat the Cardinals for the sixth time in a row. He hasn't lost to St. Louis since 1985. Smith leaning. Oh, I thought they had him at first base, and so did Keith Hernandez. Well, this is very close at first. The throw over by Gooden. Smith getting back, 
And just getting the hand in there ahead of the tag. Ozzy looked to be going on that pitch or that throw to first, so we'll see if in fact he's running here. He's not. And a breaking ball fouled off. The count remains 0-2. Runs on 10 hits for the Mets. The Cardinals with three runs on eight hits. Strikeout number six for Dwight Gooden. Center field of the right picking up the strikeout with the fastball. Came into this game with 61 strikeouts. He now has 67. And with one out, the batter will be Willie McGee. McGee tonight has reached on a fielder's choice and scored, grounded out, and doubled to right. with that sprained left ankle suffered in Monday night's or rather Tuesday night's opening game of this series. Still a threat to run with 27 stolen bases. Ball one. I would imagine however that he will be less likely to run until there are two out if he's still at first as Jesse Orozco starts warming up for New York. It's been a hot night here in St. Louis and a very long night with tremendous pressure on the New York Mets in this game. And Dwight Gooden moved up a day starting tonight. Has struck out six. He has not yet walked about it. Ozzy Smith is running and the pitch it right up the middle. Safe at second, but out at first. The ball was not sharply hit, and Allman had to wait for it, and Ozzie Smith beat him to the bag. Well, with the runner going, they stay out of the double play. It's your double play here. Allman fields the ball. He can't touch the bag, and then picks up the out at first. So now a runner in scoring position as they use the hit-and-run play to their advantage. And the batter with Smith at second and two out will be Terry Pendleton, who has driven in a run, hit two deep fly balls, one to left and one to center. He singled a right back in the first inning to pick up a 61st RBI, and he is batting 333 with runners in scoring position. Ball fouled away for strike one. Pat Perry, who was up earlier, throwing again for the Cardinals. Losing pitcher in last night's last night's ball game when he gave up the two home two run home run by Howard Johnson in the tenth. Another fastball fouled out of play and the count 0 and 2. Ozzie Smith single to left to lead off the inning and advanced to second with the one out ground out by Willie McGee. Oh, right 
the shoulder or the arm of Terry Pendleton. Well, that's again the last thing he wants to do is hit the batter and put the time run on first. That's only the second batter that Dwight Gooden has hit this year. And Davey Johnson coming out of the dugout for New York. That might be it as Kurt Ford is a scheduled batter, a left-hand batter. He's had a Roscoe throwing in the bullpen, and this is probably going to be it for Dwight Gooden. Davey's going to let Dwight get his two cents in. He had not made the decision, apparently, and now he's going to stay with him. Rarely do you see Davey Johnson go out to the mound and not make the change. That is true. But Dwight Gooden is the man, and Davey moved him up for this particular ball game, so he wanted to find out how Dwight felt, get an opinion from Carter as well, and he's decided to leave him in there against the left-handed hitting Kurt Ford, who on the night is one for three. Dwight has struck him out twice, but he did get an RBI base hit back in the first inning. The tying runs are aboard for the Cardinals in the bottom of the eighth with two out. The Mets lead at five to three. And the breaking ball is outside for ball one. has struck out on a fastball and a curveball as Roger McDowell now starts to throw for the Mets. Behind Ford, two right-hand batters, Lindemann and Pena. That would lead one to believe that Dwight needs to get Ford to remain in the ballgame. A fly ball to left and an easy play for Kevin McReynolds and the inning is over. So Dwight pitches out of a jam here in the eighth inning. One hit and a hit batter. Two left aboard. We go to the ninth. The Doctor and the Mets still going for the sweep and leading five to three after eight. And we're back after the Howard Johnson in the dugout talking to Lee Mazzilli. Now this is when he came in after the inning was over. He's got to find another bat, Ralph. Well, they took his gun away, and I don't know how they can do that unless they can find something wrong with it right here in the ballpark. And he'll have to come up with another bat. So he is talking about that. Well, when you have one of those bats and he's been hot, you don't want to lose it. Keith Hernandez takes a fastball, excuse me, for strike one. Hernandez tonight, one for four, singled back in the third inning. Keith has hit an eight straight now. Inside, one and one. I wonder, and this is pure speculation, if perhaps the bat was preliminarily examined by someone and then returned to the dugout. Hernandez hits a ball off the end of the bat with one hand. A very unusual swing, but a base hit nonetheless, his second of the night. So Keith gets his fifth, fifth hit in the series. Five for 13 in the three-game series as he singles, leading off here in the ninth inning. That's the second hit off Dolly. The other, or make that the third hit off Dolly. The first one was Howard Johnson's home run. Daryl Stromberg has walked twice and had two infield singles. Outside ball one. Daryl's also stolen two bases and scored two runs. So he's had a very good night and has done very well since being moved into the cleanup spot in the batting order. He's had a good night without getting the ball out of the infield. That's the advantage of being able to run well. Down low. 2-0. and oh. Strawberry also now with an eight-game hitting streak. Batting here with Hernandez at first and nobody out. Ball three. Kevin McReynolds on deck.
Bill Dolly, the third pitcher tonight for the Cardinals. As Greg Matthews started, he is the losing pitcher at the moment. Ball four. Dolly apparently wanted no part of Strawberry. So the Mets now with runners at first and second and nobody out. Darrell has walked three times tonight. Kevin McReynolds is one for four. He tripled to drive in two runs in the first inning when he laced one down the right field corner on a fine job of hitting with two strikes. He also scored. Since then, he's flied deep to left, flied to center, and struck out. And Whitey looking at perhaps his seventh loss in a row. And a slider and a good one, strike one. The Reynolds drove in two big runs when he tripled the right field in the first. As you look, Howard Johnson by the bat rack. Strike two to McReynolds as Dolly comes inside, so it's 0 and 2. Two strikes. Either I'm more ignorant of the rules than I think I am, or I would like to know what justification the umpires offered for removing that bat from the ballpark. And hopefully, Tim McCarver in his post game interview will be able to find out exactly that. Too high as McReynolds holds up in the count two and two. Well, they have a lot of rules that are not in the rule book. They supersede the rule book. The National League and the American League. And there are a lot of rules that are left up to the umpire's interpretation. Oh, good fastball to hit, fouled off. Still two and two. Would you say, Ralph, that's probably the second most frustrating thing for a hitter? Is to know that you got your pitch and you missed it. Absolutely is. Looking for it, get it, and don't hit it. It usually happens when you're in a batting seat. Punched foul just outside the first base bag, so the count's still two and two. Reynolds lucky to get his bat on that curveball that was out of the strike zone. That's the pitch on which he was struck out to end the seventh inning. And out there probably thinking that Keith Hernandez is getting the pitches but if he were getting the pitches that swing by McReynolds would say he's not really relaying, relaying the pitches correctly. Either that or McReynolds isn't paying any attention to that's it. right. <laughs> that should never with a swing like that last one he certainly was not getting the pitch that it was a curveball. Inside with a fastball and the count is full. So three and two, nobody out, runners at first and second. And David Johnson has to make a decision whether or not he wants the runners to be going on the pitch. Reynolds does not strike out often, although he did strike out in the seventh inning. The runners are not going and the pitch is fouled off. So it's still three and two. David Johnson ordinarily does not like to put the runners in motion when there are runners at first and second and nobody out. He will do it much more often if there is just a runner at first base, even with nobody out. Well, we just talked to Jay Horowitz about the Howard Johnson bat incident. There's a fly ball into shallow right field. Kurt Ford coming on. No chance for Hernandez to tag in advance. And the umpires have refused to talk about the incident. But we have heard third hand that the umpire or the umpires actually Rungi and West did tell Davy Johnson that if Howard Johnson would come to the plate again he could use his bat. But we're not sure that's true because it was a third hand relay. But if that's true why in the world did they take it away from him in the first place. 
Let's have a big series coming up with Montreal. And I know it sounds like it's not really a big thing, but when you have a bat that you're hitting well with, you really need it psychologically and physically. Carter grounds one to Smith. It could be a double play. Tommy Herr on to first in time. And the Mets with two runners aboard and nobody out fail to score here in the top of the ninth inning. We will see if it haunts them as the Cardinals trail by two going to the bottom of the ninth. Mets five. St. Louis three. We're back after this. Four. Nissan scoreboard. Major League Nissan scoreboard in the National League. Montreal beat Chicago six to one. Heaton the winning pitcher now 12 and four. Houston eight. Atlanta five. A final. Philadelphia one. Pittsburgh nothing. And San Diego 12. Cincinnati eight. In the American League the Yankees beat Kansas City six to one. Tommy John now 10 and 3. Cleveland beat Baltimore 6 to 4. And Milwaukee in the ninth inning leading Chicago 6 to 1. Bottom of the order to face Dwight Gooden for the Cardinals here in the ninth inning. Mets leading 5 to 3. Jim Lindeman has doubled in three at bats and also fly very deep to right field. And a doctor with a fastball for ball one. Both McDowell and Orozco are now throwing in the bullpen. Steve, I've come up with some idea that might have some possible effect. The umpires, by taking the bat, now know that the bat that was used to hit the home run is in their possession. If Johnson would come up again and they would allow him to use that bat, they would still have that bat right there. And by doing so, after the game, they could inspect the bat and determine then whether or not it was illegal. That would prevent Howard Johnson from switching bats, right. hiding that one, if there was something illegal. Now, Howard said to them, hey, go ahead, check the bat. That would lead one to believe that he had nothing to hide, but that will be determined. Back to the task at hand. It's 3-0 to Lindemann, and there is strike one. So the Cardinals looking for a base runner in an effort to once again bring the tying run to the plate. Lindemann to be followed by Tony Pena. And then a pinch hitter for the pitcher Bill Dolly. Now I do believe I'm not positive of this. If the bat were illegal, foul out of play. It's now three and two. The home run would be disallowed, and the game would be suspended and resumed from that point again. I'm almost sure that's the way it works. You cannot use a bat that's been corked or has BBs or whatever in the hitting surface. But if it has an illegal or substance or a substance on it that is. Outside of the guidelines, you can't take the hit away not, after the fact. Not pine tar, no. Fastball lined to right field for a base hit. <laughs> Dwight not walking, or not wanting rather, to walk him on a 3 2 pitch, grooved one to Lindemann, and he was all over it. And the tying run will come to the plate, and Davey Johnson is going to make the change with Tony Pena coming to the plate for St. Louis. Gooden has worked eight innings. He has given up nine base hits while striking out six. He did hit one batter and did not walk a batter. And it's going to be Roger McDowell coming in the game. So Dwight goes eight plus, leaves as the winning pitcher at this point in the ball game with nobody out in the ninth inning and a man on for the Cardinals. We'll be back after this word from Ford. Jim McDowell, a new pitcher for the Mets with a record of five and three, an earned run average of 3.81. He has 14 saves, working 54 and a third innings. He has allowed five home runs, walking 12 and giving up 22 strikeouts. And this is his 39th ball game. McDowell, the winning pitcher in last night's ball game, gave up a run to lose the save for the starting pitcher. Becoming the winning pitcher as Howard Johnson hit the two-run home run in the tenth inning to win it. Tony Pena has tripled and scored in three at bats. He tripled off the right field wall in the seventh inning. Scored on a ground out by pinch hitter John Morris. That made it a one-run game. The Mets answered that run and pushed it back to a two-run lead on Howard Johnson's home run in the eighth. Nobody out. And a broken bat base hit.
when you saw the bat off in the hitter's hands like Roger McDowell is, the hitter's not supposed to get a base hit. That's a perfect pitch. He breaks his bat. The head of the bat flies out to third, and it goes between the hole between Johnson and Allman as Johnson was playing on the line to guard against the extra base hit. Base hit. Linderman goes down to second, and now the tying run is at first base with no one out, and Jose Okindo will be the batter. What a job Jose Okindo has done as a pinch hitter. He has been outstanding. Not only is he batting 316 overall, but he's batting 700 as a pinch hitter with seven hits in 10 pinch hit appearances. And even with those stats, he will be in a bunting situation right here. Thought about it a little too late on the pitch high for ball one. Kendo intently studying third base coach Nick Leva. The Cardinals have the tying runs aboard with nobody out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Strike one. And with the count in favor of the batter, Buddy Herzog switched. And he had Okendo hitting away in that spot. Roger McDowell was breaking toward the third base line, anticipating the bunt as the Mets do not employ the rotation play. Howard Johnson staying at third base. And McDowell such an outstanding athlete that if the bunt did go that way, they might have a shot at getting the lead runner, Lindemann, who is not blessed with great speed. Kendo bunting. It's a high chopper off the plate. Carter has to go to first. And Ralph, you talk about the fortunes of the game. Right here, Okendo gets a high bouncer out in front of the plate. Carter, the only man who has a chance, and they just nip Okendo at first. As the time run moves down to second. The broken bat base hit by Pena where the bat is sawed off in his hands. The Mets are charging and have the sacrifice bunt covered but it hits the plate. Consequently the air time gives them no play on the lead runner at third and here's Vince Coleman who is 0 for 4 with runners at second and third and one out. The infield playing shallow. In an effort to prevent the tying run, Tony Pena from scoring. Ball one. Well, the runner at third base does not mean anything. The all-important run is that man right there, Tony Pena. The tying run. Coleman has grounded out twice and struck out twice. All those at-bats, of course, have been good. Grounded foul on the sinker and the count now one and one. One of the keys for the Mets tonight has been their ability to keep Vince Coleman off base. Coleman in the last 91 games has been on base in 86 of those games with either a base hit or a walk. But he has not been on base yet tonight. Chopper to first and a tough hop for Hernandez. He's coming home. Lindemann is out at the plate. A terrible job of base running by Lindemann as he is out of the plate. Otherwise, the Cardinals would have had the bases loaded with one man out. And in addition to that, Tony Pena stayed at second base. So a big play for the Mets on a terrible base running play by Lindemann where he should have been able to score on this ball or stay at third. He did neither and he waited until late to make his break for home and once again Keith Hernandez throws home and gets a runner at home. Carter taking the blunt of the blow 
and holding on to the ball. And as you pointed out, if he had scored, Pena stayed at second. He was not watching the runner in front. Hernandez with a great play on a tough play. He saw he had no chance to get Coleman at first and had the presence of mind with that fine arm to fire the ball home. Big play for the Mets. Ozzie Smith takes low for ball one. Now there are two outs and runners at first and second. Now Coleman was not credited with a base hit or at least has not yet been credited with a base hit as they got the, the out. out was made at home. Otherwise he'd have an infield hit again. Swing and a miss for strike one and the count one and one. One of the real credits should go to Keith Hernandez who was alert enough to pick up the runner coming in after he did not throw the ball to McDowell after he had bobbled it. He knew he had no chance at first. He held on to the ball and then he picked up Lindemann trying to score and made an accurate throw home. Just another example of why Keith Hernandez defensively is just a step above anybody else at first base. Ball two is outside and the count two and one. Ozzie Smith tonight two for four. He doubled in the first and single in the eighth. He is flied out and grounded out his other two at bats. McDowell trying to save it for Gooden. And the Mets trying to sweep the Cardinals, leading five to three with two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. But the tying runs are still aboard for St. Louis. However, because of Lindemann's base running blunder, the tying runs are at first and second instead of second and third. Three and one to Ozzie Smith. Mm. You think Ozzie will be taking another one here? I would have to think so. Whitey Herzog has seen a lot of baseball games in his career that started with the Yankees as a player. He has been a farm director, a third base coach, a manager, and a general manager. A blooper into center field. Mookie Wilson coming over, makes the catch, and the Mets have swept the Cardinals. Roger McDowell saves it for Dwight Gooden in the ninth inning as Dwight goes to eight and three, pitching eight strong innings, coming back on three days rest. And the Mets pulled within five and a half games of the Cardinals in third place behind the Montreal Expos who also won today. They are four behind St. Louis and the Mets now go on to Montreal for three more big ones. Well when this ball was hit it appeared that it was going to drop in a little blooper into left center field but Mookie with the speed gets up to it and makes the catch. And the Cardinals have lost seven in a row and the Mets now in the series with the Cardinals six and six and three and three here at Bush Stadium. So Whitey watches the last out turns and goes with Brad Shandies into the clubhouse and Gary Carter seeing the catch says we did the job McDowell picking up the save his 15th and McDowell with a win and the save in this series and it didn't look good for a while but the Mets pulled it out. Well the Cardinals about to pull out one of their patented come from behinders but the Mets pull out the sweep a five to three victory to take all three here in Bush Stadium in St. Louis and Ralph and I'll be back with a wrap up Tim standing by with a post game interview for you so don't go away. We're back to St. Louis after this for Bud Light.